Hey guys, we are on day 223 in our Bible reading plan, and today we're reading in the book of Jeremiah, chapters 14 through 17. So chapter 14, we read that the Lord is sending a drought, and Jeremiah prays to the Lord on behalf of the people, but the Lord will not relent. The Lord says to him not to even pray for them, that he has already decided what's coming. He tells Jeremiah that the prophets are prophesying falsely in the Lord's name and that the Lord's judgment is coming on them. And still we read that Jeremiah pleads with God. Then in chapter 15, we read the Lord replies to him that even if Moses and Samuel were to stand before him, that his heart would not go out to this people because they've rejected God. They have rejected him and wandered and been wayward, so he is going to judge them. We read in verse 10 how unbearable this is for Jeremiah that he laments his own birth. And the Lord tells Jeremiah that he will save him if he repents and if he turns back to the Lord and he no longer utters worthless words, but worthy words delivering the Lord's message to the people. So God has called Jeremiah to be his spokesman and he's told Jeremiah not to intercede for these people because the Lord's mind is already made up and he calls Jeremiah back to that purpose, back to that end of being his spokesman to the people. In chapter 16 we read it says, then the word of the Lord came again to Jeremiah. The entire generation that will be born in this place is going to perish and Jeremiah is not to mourn for them. He's not to show sorrow for this generation because it's the Lord's judgment, and he's not to feast or celebrate with them because the Lord's judgment has come. And because of this behavior, the people are going to ask him why the Lord has decreed such great disaster on them. And Jeremiah is supposed to tell them that it is because their ancestors forsook God because they did not keep his law or obey his commands, and that the current generation's sin is even worse than their ancestors. Ancestors. The Lord says, however, a day is coming when he will restore them. But now the Lord's judgment is coming and he will repay them for their wickedness. And this time the prophet responds differently. This time Jeremiah declares God to be his refuge and strength and strong tower. And God says that he will teach them and that he will bring his judgment on all who turn away from him. In chapter 17, verse 7, we read this. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Verse 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Make no mistake, the Lord's judgment is coming. And the chapter ends with a call to honor the Sabbath and to keep it holy. And actually, this is the thing that really stood out to me as I was reading through all of this, that we continue to read why the Lord is going to bring judgment on his people, that he is at the point of no return on this one. He's already decided judgment is coming. But then here, there's this call to honor the Sabbath once again, to return to the Lord as his covenant people. And it seems sort of out of place in the midst of all this. When we've been talking about idol worship, when we've been talking about turning to other gods, when we've been talking about wandering away from the Lord, that God would elevate this call to remember the Sabbath, to honor the Sabbath. And really this call, it is to honor the Sabbath, to actually observe the Sabbath, because in observing the Sabbath, the people learn to turn once again and follow God, to turn, to lay down their work, to lay down their striving, to stop and worship the Lord their God, to depend on him, to learn what it is to trust him for provision once again, to learn what it is to trust him above all of the other gods, above all of the other striving that they're doing, and to really learn what it means to once again be his people. The call to honor the Sabbath is to learn what it means to be one of God's people, to be a child of God, to be someone who honors and worships Yahweh once again with your whole life, even your time. Over the last couple of years, there has been such a call to return to Sabbath for the church, and there have been books written about it in the last few years. Some really good books have come out about Sabbath and learning what it means to become a people of Sabbath once again and what it means to really honor the Sabbath. And so for me, as I was reading through this today, it was just a reminder of that call to each week make sure that I'm setting aside time and space where I put down my work, 
I put down all of the other identities I carry, mom, wife, pastor, homeschooler, <laughs> teacher, all of those other titles that I carry to put them down and pick up child of God, to pick up the identity God's workmanship created to do good works which God created in advance for us to do and not to let the works that I'm doing in this world be a distraction from his call and his kingdom purposes in my life, but to spend time resting and centering on learning what it means to be a child of God, what it means to be part of the community of God and the people of God and rediscovering my identity in that, to honor the Sabbath and to worship him wholeheartedly at least one day a week. I hope that encourages you. I don't know if God's speaking to you about Sabbath today, but I would encourage you if he is to really try to set some time aside and honor it, to obey his word and his commands and spend time this week resting and worshiping God and remembering who you are in him. I'd love to hear how the Lord's speaking to you today. So let's encourage one another by dropping comments in the Bible app and sharing what God's doing in our lives. Have a great day, guys.